And I was going to ask you what it felt like to be a part of that team, but you kind of described it where you felt empowered and it was fun. And uh, that's a very special thing because, uh, you know, it's not always like that. And especially when you're in highly competitive environments, uh, was there anything that he did uh, specifically behind the scenes to kind of help bring that out? Or was it just as simple as like you said, where it was just a genuine fun every day? No, he worked it, man. And he coached the coaches hard. I mean, I think a common misconception of Pete is that like, he's all like chewing gum and big white shoes and laughing and fist pumping all the time. Like dudes as serious as it gets, as competitive as it gets. Staff meetings would be legit. They wouldn't be demeaning though. And they wouldn't even be like dramatically demanding because guys wanted to play for him and guys want, coaches wanted to coach for him. Coaches wanted to be organized for him. You know, we all knew the reality of SC. It was a launching pad. Right? I mean, look at everybody who launched out of there. Lane, youngest coach ever to the Raiders. Sark, UW, he's continued on. Mark Jackson, athletic director of Villanova. I mean, my broadcasting career has been over 15 years because of what I did at USC, right? I'm the least amount of launch pad guys, but everybody launched out to a head coaching opportunity or a big time opportunity in their lives. So we all knew it. So there was no like, I have to grind you to grind you. There was no... uh I, mean, I don't want to like throw certain names in here, but like you read enough stories about some coaches that, you know, they're just hard to work for. And, and it doesn't have to be like that. And Pete knew that. And I think you, you go back to that impetus, even of his book in the first page, I mean, I have the book over my shoulder here where he said, I slam the book shut stunned. And it was all about John Wooden. He didn't win a championship in his first 15 years, but then he won 12 in the next 13 or whatever it was. Cause he figured out his philosophy and his approach. And I think that was Pete. And with that was, of course, like pushing some buttons. Like I always call him the ultimate point guard. And they would say the same thing in Seattle now, bouncing from room to room, you know, bouncing from player and coach to player and coach. Like quick story, he used to say to me about Kenny Norton. I remember this example like he was yesterday. He said, hey, go up to Kenny and tell him that you and I were talking and that I was telling you so impressive. He goes, watch what happens. I'd go outside a couple hours later, practice, go up to Kenny and say, Hey, man, I was just talking to coach and he was so impressed with the linebackers. And you'd see whether it was Kenny Norton or another coach be like, ah, oh, stick your chest out a little bit. Like you feel affirmed in a different way. And I think Peaches knew those buttons to push, whether it was around Matt Leiner or Mitch Mustaine or the quarterback in between. Like he just really was aware of how to motivate uh, and, and kind of how to be human. And, and again, I go back to everybody felt seen and heard.